four tickets, in fact. Gesundheit. Thank you. And hopefully, uh, I'll have a brand new uh, promo code for you for CLE Clothing Company. You have today and tomorrow, last minute, but it's still time for you to use the word POOF, P-O-O-F, as uh, your promo code for 20% off of whatever you get if you're in one of their stores. Always recommend that, by the way. I mean, I get people are busy. Uh, you might not have the time to get into one of their stores, but it is always fun to just kind of immerse yourself in everything that's going on. Or you can just as easily shop online, but either way, just use the promo code. So uh, today and tomorrow, end of May, already. That's crazy. I know, it's wild. You can use Poof, and pretty soon we'll be talking about the end of summer. So enjoy it while you can, um, and uh, why not? Thursday, I hope you can join us if you're out Strongsville way. Uh, Thursday night, MMS is going to be at uh, the Brew Kettle from 5 to 8 for the inaugural keg tap of the Rockin' Buzzard Brew. We haven't done a beer in a minute, and uh, so it's going to be uh, very exciting. Uh, I, I I don't know. I think I'm the only one that's going to be there from the show. I think you guys have stuff going yeah, on. Stuff. I'm headlining the Foundry Social. Right. On Thursday, if you're out in Medina Way. Foundrysocial.com mm-hmm. for tickets. But, yeah, so I'll haul ass after the show and, and kind of get there at the tail end. But uh, this Thursday from 5 to 8, we're going to tap the inaugural keg there at the Brew Kettle in uh, Strongsville, which is always a fun spot. And then we're going to be rolling out that Rockin' Buzzard Brew. Classic American Pilsner. Delicious. So any place throughout Northeast Ohio that carries Brew Kettle beer is going to carry the Buzzard Brew. I guess it's also going to be on draft. So they'll go, how do you want that? And you say, well, I have uh, choices. But I see on the can, there will be a QR code. We're just talking about QR codes. Oh, no. (laughs) Well, a lot of restaurants are getting rid of them, but uh, on the side of a beer can, scan me for a good time is what it says. And um, so there you go. So if you're uh, out Strongsville way or want to come say hi, uh, MMS is going to be out there. 5 to 8 on Thursday afternoon. Kind of our official release party as it uh, is. So that'll be a lot of fun. If you listen to us on iHeartRadio from outside Ohio, tell me where. Uh, Chris is in Pittsburgh. Justin listens in Savannah, Georgia. Let me focus on our Southern Bureau Chiefs for a second. Um, people forget that Florida is the South. It's very much the South. Maybe not in the traditional sense. A lot of Northerners moved to Florida. Matt's in Delray Beach. Uh, Justin's in Savannah. I mentioned him. Well, listen, we have a lot of people in the South. And the reason I bring this up is, is because I was reading about a study that they did that there is a pay gap, for lack of a better term, There's a pay gap for people that have Southern accents. That people who have Southern accents, you know, people who work in media try very hard to de-regionalize their accent, you know, and for some people it's uh, more difficult than others. Uh, It's why people who are from a certain region usually end up just working in that region. You know, there are a lot of Uh, people from New England, by the way, that are on radio and television throughout that area of the country because it's not so strange to the ear to hear a really thick Boston accent or New Hampshire, whatever it is. Southern accents can cost people 20% in how much they're paid. Job applicants with Southern accents are also among some of the most likely people to change how they talk because they're trying to make more money. And I don't think it's like new, you know, people have made jokes for a long, long time about how, you know, if your doctor came in talking like this, you know, you might feel strange about it. But I love that accent. I was hanging out with my buddy from North Carolina all weekend, and he's got a pretty strong country accent. Carolina accent. Yeah. and uh, It's absolutely charming. Now, he's dumb as a block, but, (laughs) I mean, that's just who he is. But to hear him talk, (laughs) right, you'd never know it. He, no, you you can tell immediately. Just by a couple of intonations of his uh, mm-hmm. accent and what he's saying, you go, this guy's dumb as a post. <laughs> no, he's not. 
He's, he's I took a big old swallow out of it, and I was like, uh oh. He's a Dustin and Georgia. Guys, it's Dustin. Now, I don't know what Dustin does. He's, he's a told driver. us. He's a truck driver. Is I he thought. a trucker? I yeah. thought. Yeah. So they talk about a wage uh, gap between people with a southern accent, thick southern accent. Listen, that's, um, you know, that's my, my dad. My dad was from um, Mississippi and Alabama, and so I think he had kind of, his accent had kind of uh, flattened in the Midwest somewhat by the time I was old enough to know those things, but I could hear certain words that he'd say that yeah, I don't remember. Kind of have a like drawl to them. A very strong accent. Alexa, can I hear Alan's dad? Alan's Alexa, <laughs> just spit take there. Is it is it plugged in? Uh, hold on, let me let me reset it real quick. All right, let's try it again. Alexa, can I hear Alan's dad? Helen, this is your father speaking from the Alexa. You see how he flattened his southern yeah, drawl? Very, very flat. Yeah. People from New England and New Jersey are the most likely to alter their accents uh, for jobs. So you, you car parked and, you know, but it's not that big uh, of a deal if you uh, turn out. It's you you're, you're sound more like a hometown favorite, you know. If you're working in your hometown. If you're listen, you if you're it. a Bostonian and you're on the radio, or you're on television. It's not that big of a deal. Like the Cardi B guy. Right? On the news? Cardi. Cardi, Cardi B. That was in uh, Boston. Mm-hmm. Rapper Cardi B is hoping to trademark the very specific way she Trademark the very specific, specific way. Yeah. Rapper Cardi B. Yeah, it's like it's not, you know. Or when I go home, there's certain news anchors that will have like a, not a thick Chicago accent, but like you can hear that lilt and it's, you know, it's. What's a Chicago accent? It depends on north side or south side. It, can you do it one? changes. Well, everybody remembers the bear, not bears on on oh. SNL. That was kind of like the parody of, mm-hmm. but also not far off. What was uh, sausages and things like that, and you know, the comic Danny Callis. Trejo. Oh. oh God, Danny Callis, from, Jesus from Chicago. He's got a very strong Chicago accent. Is he still alive? I think so. All right, he's out there. Good for him. I haven't seen that guy in a decade. Yeah, I wonder what. I've never heard that name. Rapper Cardi B is hoping to trademark the very specific way she says okay, and we're not kidding. Do it. I can't. Try it. Okay. I can't roll my tongue. Okay. No. (laughs) It's like a parakeet. People still swear to me that there's a Cleveland accent, and I've been here 13 years, and I guess I I still don't hear it. Supposedly the way we say our A's. Like you say cat and bag. It's like um, pond. Like, well, yeah, I mean that the, growing up A's as close to Wisconsin as I did, that sounds more like Minnesota, Wisconsin. I mean, that's no, because not... Minnesota and Wisconsin are a lot slower. At least this is what I've been told when I travel that it's like not just saying pop, but saying pop, pop, pop. like yeah. O's are A H's. I need a big. N- yeah, my cat, my house. I guess I don't hear that here. Some regions have very distinct, like the Pittsburgh thing is very mm-hmm. distinct. I love it. Cleveland, I don't hear, I guess, I don't know. Or maybe I do hear it and it doesn't hit my ear differently, or maybe I've been here long enough and I, I don't know. But um, if you're, you know, listen, uh, there's people in the Deep South who went to medical school. They're fine. <laughs> Just because they might talk like this doesn't mean they don't know what they're talking about. Now, hand me that saw. I'm going to take a look at his leg. I think it's fun. I love it. See, the trouble is we didn't really know my dad's side of the family. So my entire the entire half of my extended family that talked like that, I didn't grow up around them. I grew up around the Midwestern half of my family. And even though uh, my mom's extended family were like, you know, central Illinois rural people, they didn't sound like that. Now, you get uh, Illinois is a very big state, very long state. It borders Kentucky. You know, it's like Ohio. You get to the bottom of the state, and everybody's like, where are my shoes? You know, you'd swear that you were 500 miles south. So I don't know what it is about going to the southernmost part of any state. Uh, you're going to get more of that. I mean, you don't even have to go that far. No, people in Medina sound like that. Do they? <laughs> Parts of it. Yeah. Huh. Where it won't be super thick, but they'll say things like crick. Yeah, I was hanging out down by a crick. 
Oh, really? What? Yeah. Are yeah. they playing it up, though? I mean, some people really... So, no, know. I mean, it depends on the part of Medina, but there's definitely some... Uh, the crick. Hillbilly areas out there. Wow. I mean, I grew up around people that talked that way, and I, I did not want to sound like that. Well, again, that's the point. There's a lot Do of people you? that are like, they will flatten out their, or, or they'll learn to uh, speak in a certain way, especially if they're going to be a public speaker. But you never had that, like, when you were a kid? Nah. Never had part of? No, because it was just, a, you know, with spending time with my family. Nobody in my family had it. My uncles had it on my mom's side because they lived in more rural areas, so they had a little bit more of a country lilt to them, but it wasn't really incredibly strong, but it was there. Hmm. It's northern Ohio or upper Midwest. My wife is from Toledo and has the same accent. Wait till my son is going to crock up. Oh, God, what was that? What? Going to crack. Uh, we got a call from somebody a while ago, wasn't it? Wait till I tell my son he's going to crack up. Oh, the Boston guy. Oh, the Boston guy. Yeah. Where the dude pooped in yeah. the, uh, yeah. On the train or whatever. Right. He's going to crack up. <laughs> right. Boston train poop. That was a lot of years ago. Yeah. Hey, Woody. Ellen. Yes. How's your day, brother? So far, so good. How was your holiday weekend, Woody? Big plans this past weekend? Uh, you know, I, I went like, uh, I went crazy, uh, you know, Balls to the wall, like the like the the rock song from Accept, uh, mm -hmm. Friday, Saturday, and Sun, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and I just laid in my hammock all day Monday to recuperate from my long day on the in the mine today. This guy's out there in a hammock, Bill. He's got a hammock schedule. He's hammocking. Is that is there a, a verb version of that? Or you spend your time hammocking? A hamtramic uh, is, is mostly uh, mostly. <laughs> Isn't the Hamtramck a suburb of Detroit? The Hamtramck is out there, yes. But hey, uh, you guys are talking about accents, and you know, you you said that some people can determine determine whether you're from North Chicago or South South, South Chicago, and and it it struck me funny because um uh, I have a good friend of mine who lives uh, in England, a couple hours west of London, and he has got accents from from like literally from. The east end of London, the west end of London, the south of England, the north of England, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scottish. Yeah, there, and, there and are them all down. dozens of variations in the UK. I remember my dad went to London for business when I was a kid. He went over for a month and he came back and he had like a British lilt, which was <laughs> very strange to hear. It wasn't like a thick Cockney accent, but I mean, a month is enough time where if you're talking to people and you're hearing the way they talk and it's like, you know. Uh, now, whether or not the people he worked with over there uh, left with any kind of Midwestern uh, vibe, I don't know. But I do remember that when I was a kid. Is, is, that, is that kind of you, like, vocally acclimate, uh, unbeknownst, you know, unknowing to yourself, you just, like, try to follow suit, you know? I don't know. I mean, I think if you're, I'm, if you're anywhere well, for an extended period of time, you might pick up local. Yeah. When, yeah. Yeah, when, when, I moved up, when I moved to Cleveland uh, back when, in my early 20s, I, I went back to Iowa five years later. And my friends like, why are you talking like that? I'm like, what are you talking about? And they you know, asked what Mary was saying. I think uh, uh, the, uh, some of the Cleveland accent it has to do with like the word with. Are you going with me? Or twenty? You you, you, like twenty? I'll say twenty. You say twenty. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. You right? say yeah, twenty, it's, like it's, T W U N N Y. <laughs> I yeah, need a 20. Yeah, 20, but a lot of people do that. It's not even weird. I mean, it's just, you know, it's little variations. I don't know, but it's interesting. It's very interesting. Uh, the, uh, are they, what are they called? Oh, is it, it's not, um, what, what, what are uh, variations of uh, the same language called? V uh, uh, yeah, uh, accents? Uh, okay, thank you, Woody. I, I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> Dialects? I don't know. Alan Medina absolutely plays it up. It's Hillbilly Medina. They like to say they're Southern and have Southern pride, but if they go North, the first thing they hit is Canada. Is that true? Southern pride. I, that's oh, not the Medina, Medina that I remember. Because, like, w the weird thing about Medina was when I was a kid, everybody hated country music and were kind of, like, it was, it was just like a regular suburb, the part that I grew up in, right. even though I was the one that was in the country. And then when I went back... Everybody like started liking country music, and they all acting all country. I'm like, you guys, are, 
you all live in You're the north of the still. Mason-Dixon right. line. Like, what do you do? What's going on? And they all acted like they're, like, into tractors and stuff. I'm like, you guys don't, like, like, I actually grew up with that stuff. You didn't. Like, it was it was just weird. Yeah, because a lot of it's in the sticks, but now a lot of it's been developed, right? Been, yeah. And yeah. The, and I'm talking about 20, 25, 30 years ago where it was still that way. And now it's even more developed. But, yeah, people like the cosplay country. It's always interesting to me, too, people who never lose their accents. People who come from other countries, and it never flattens even a little bit. They still have every peak and valley of their accent. It's wild. Well, there's people like Arnold Schwarzenegger who still has the accent. He leans into it. But there's still, like, no one that's from... Austria sounds like him. Like, <laughs> Is that true? I mean, do, have you ever heard anybody else that has that accent the way he does? Um, it, just Hitler. No, I don't think yeah. Hitler had uh, Schwarzenegger's accent. I've never accent. heard him speak uh, all that much English. Yeah, true. Hmm. Well, okay. Something to think about.